Look at me. Look at me, please. When we speak about souls, the devil manifests. Who really wants to receive the Holy Spirit? Do you know why the Lord Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit? Do you know why He wants to give us the Holy Spirit? Pay attention, please. A pessoa. A person, as the Bible says, that he who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise. He who wins money, gains money, is rich. He has comfort in this world. But he who wins souls is wise. Is wise. There is nothing more glorious to us especially to Esther and I, than to save souls for Jesus. Every single person we win to Jesus is more valuable than all the gold on the face of the earth because everything stays behind. Everything stays behind. All the gold, all the silver, our reputation, all the glory of this world stays behind when we die. But not the soul. The soul is eternal. The soul, your soul is eternal. Your soul is eternal. Either it will live its eternity with God to continue serving God there in heaven, or it will live or perish permanently in the lake of fire and sulfur, where there will be tears, crying and gnashing of teeth, as the Lord Jesus mentioned. The Lord Jesus mentioned this. Your soul, you decide. Your mind decides. You decide. Only you can decide whether to serve God or to serve mammon. Mammon might be yourself, to desire to gain money, to make money, to have a more comfortable life, to give the best comfortable life for your family, which means to live serving yourself, because whoever serves himself is a servant, is a master of himself. And whoever serves the Lord God is a servant of God. So either you serve God or mammon. If you are a servant of yourself, just know this, that in eternity, you will cry and you will have and you will gnash your teeth for all eternity. Only those who are servants of God, those who serve God, have the guarantee of eternity. The eternity of their souls with God. Jesus speaks about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. The kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? This was the word which God called me with. It awakened me. When I was 18 years old, I was studying for university, to study engineering, and take care of my life. And I was walking in the streets, I was walking from work to home, and I was thinking, I'm going to conquer this, I'm going to graduate, I'm going to have a degree, you know, making plans for my life. In the middle of the road, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. What good is it for you to gain the whole world? What profit is it to gain the whole world but lose your soul? He spoke in here when he speaks, there is no doubt. Immediately, my focus changed and I put my life aside and surrendered body, soul, and spirit in order for him to use me 
to save souls for him. So what you see today is the fruit of one word which the Holy Spirit gave me that day. I was walking, I was not thinking about God, I was not converted. I didn't even know Jesus. But I knew something about his word and he said specifically this verse, what profit is it for you to gain the whole world but lose your soul? What profit is it for you to have all the gold in this world? One day you're going to die and everything will stay behind. This wonderful temple will stay behind. I do not know what will become of it when the Antichrist comes to take charge or live in this world. I don't know what will happen with it. Probably if you stay behind, you will not see this temple open for people to praise God, but to praise rather the Antichrist. I do not know, but I will not be here, but I'm leaving the seed for you. Think about your life. You think about getting married, having a family, children. What about after? Your dreams, the dreams you have. You got married, finally you found a suitable person, but then it was hell in your life. Shortly Bishop will pray for you. You who got married about for being, to think, thinking that you would be happy, but you added to your unhappiness, yes or no? You had a child as a fruit of your love, but this child has only brought problems to you. Why? Because these have been your projects, personal projects, personal dreams. It's not the dream of God. God and His dream, the dream of God is to take place in your life what took place in the life of Philip to make of you the blessing itself. Amen. But the blessing to serve him, not to serve yourself, not to have this or that or the other, not to have your name engraved, no. But to have your life utilized serving the Spirit of the Almighty God. Amen. God is Spirit. God is searching for a body, a body, in order for the Spirit to descend and use it to save souls. Your body, as you are, if you're ugly or beautiful, skinny or fat, man or woman, young or old, it does not matter. If you're disabled, there's no problem. God wants to use your body, but not to satisfy you, but for His glory. For His glory. So I will pray. And if you have the purpose, oh God, I want to serve you wholeheartedly. I want to serve you. I did not know how. I don't know how it will be. It does not matter how it will happen. Don't worry. He will give you a direction. But if you truly place your life wholeheartedly, entirely on the altar, imagine yourself you are on the altar and you say, Oh God, do whatever you want of me. The Spirit will come down upon you and He will enable you to save souls, not to make money. The Spirit of God is not to make money. It is to save souls. Amen. If truly you want the Holy Spirit to serve God, He will descend upon you right now. Amen. Praise be to God. Look at me, please. When you are at home today, it does not matter the time when you are alone. Go to the toilet 
put your elbows, get on your knees, put your elbows against the toilet seat and speak to God. When you speak to God, you will speak in the strange tongues. You will speak in strange tongues. And know this, you received the Holy Spirit not to serve yourself, not to project your own life, nor of your family. You received the Holy Spirit to serve Jesus. And if you do not serve Him, the Spirit will leave you. You will become the dry bones again. Amen. Because God cannot be mocked. God is not a man like us. God is God. Fear, to be feared. He is the Almighty God, Lord of hosts. And He is only Lord. Pay attention. God of Abraham, Isaac, Israel is only Lord. He is only the Lord of those who serve Him. Which means if you do not serve Him, forget about it. Forget about calling yourself a servant of God. Amen. God grants us the privilege. There is no greater honor nor glory than this. To be a servant of God. My glory is not the work, the recognition of the work which we have done. No, I do not receive glory which comes from men. I do not want claps from anyone, worship of anyone. I think all the honor, all the glory that this world comes from this, that comes from this world is trash. It's trash. My glory does not come from down, down here. It comes from above. Jesus said, he said these words. You can read it. You can verify this. John chapter 12, verse 26. The Lord Jesus said the following. If, if anyone serves me, if anyone serves me, Let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Where is Jesus? In order for me to serve him. Where is Jesus in order for me to serve him? Jesus is in the prisons, in the hospitals, in the, beneath, under the bridge. He's in the lost corners. So if I serve the Lord Jesus, then I must be present with those who are desperate, afflicted, who desire to kill themselves, depressed, with their families destroyed. When we are with these people, we are serving Jesus. And he says more. Does someone who served Jesus have time to serve themselves, I ask. And he adds, he compliments, if anyone serves me, if anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. So the honor, my honor, does not come from down here, but it comes from above. My honor comes from above. And I was speaking to my colleagues that when Jesus called Abraham, he said, Abraham, leave your country, your lands, your properties, your possessions, leave your family, your father, leave your father's house and go to the land which I will show you. It was the Lord 
presenting himself to Abraham. And so God went to search in Abraham that servant, that person who would serve him. Abraham was not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Abraham did not know anything about God. But God found Abraham and came down upon him. God found you and descended upon you with the Holy Spirit. And what he did to Abraham, he wants to do to you. He made of Abraham a nation. He has made of us a nation. He wants to make of you a nation. But you need to leave everything to serve him. Amen. And if you obey, just obey. To obey, you do not need the Holy Spirit. To obey, all you need is a sound mind. That's all. That's all. Only a fool does not accept to serve God. So if you obey Him, He will honor you. Do you remember what David said? He said, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will satisfy the desires of your heart. So when God honors us with even what we cannot imagine, we would like. Amen. He spoke to me in the middle of the road. He spoke to you here now. No one explained anything to me. He just said that and I decided to quit studying to do what he wanted me to do. My friends, I apologize to extend this, but I would like to share with you everything that God has given me, everything. Not partially, not a piece, but I want to give you everything. And you will decide what to do with all that I'm giving you. When we serve the Lord, I doubt he will leave us alone. Never. We do not have to worry about house, family, the future, the future of our children, this and that and the other. Nothing. I don't need anything. I do not need money. I need nothing. Wherever I go, I have a place to stay. A place to dwell with my rib. Amen. And God honors me. Amen. I said, God, just give me one soul. Just one soul. And look. The whole world, we go anywhere in the world. Souls are being rescued. For the glory, not mine, but the glory exclusively, which is His. God wants to do the same through you. you this kind of servant, because I'm already going down the mountain. I'm descending the mountain. I gave what I had to give. I climbed the peak. Now I'm descending, I'm declining. So things begin to happen. The knees are no longer the same. Sometimes it goes like this. And there's that cough. Yes or no? The voice is no longer the same. But tied up, we are going to make a difference in the name of the Lord Jesus. Until the last day. We are going to make a difference in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God wants to do this with you. Amen. God wants to do this with you. This is why the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, do not worry about the clothes, what, are, what you're going to eat or drink. Do not worry about the day of tomorrow. Worry about serving the Lord your God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. He who is a servant does not worry about himself. He who is a servant of God does not think about himself. Does not think about his family. Does not think about anything unless in pleasing his Lord. Do not forget this. Do not forget this. Because if you do not serve the Lord, you'll be serving yourself 
or this world or mammon. One way or another, you'll be serving, you'll be out of God's plans. You are the one who chooses.